Hello students, welcome to Scholar IAS Current Affair Classes. Let's look into the important articles of the day. So the first article is related to developments around Himalayan region. This is related to both GS1 geography as well as GS3 environment. There are few points that are related to GS3 environment. So that's why I am mentioning GS3. So uh, what is it about? India and China, both these countries are actually considering to build some dams across this region in this region okay but we know that himalayan region is geologically an unstable area okay china is planning to build dam across yarlang zangbo river so this is nothing but the upstream of brahmaputra river uh, so this yangzang rambo river is in tibet okay students remember this point it can be asked in prelims they can ask this mention this rivers river and they can ask and match the following or they can ask this name and ask it is a upstream of which river something like that okay so make a note of this name of this river so what is the purpose of building such a dam in, across this river is to provide electricity and to achieve china's target of reducing carbon emission peak okay by 2030 so this is the reason why they want to build a dam across this river india is also proposing uh, planning to build a dam for hydro project same like china in the northeastern states so that would be in arunachal pradesh mostly in arunachal pradesh actually in arunachal pradesh there have been some projects like coming hydro project hydropower project and subarnashree lower hydroelectric project so these are already started so these are also these work work is also going on and china actually has completed 11 of the 55 targeted projects so construction of dams in one or the other way is going on in in the form of hydropower projects it is going on in both these countries so what is the issue actually so even if dams are built and the objective is looks good because they want to reduce the carbon emission so when the objective seems to be good what is the issue see we, the issue is related to the geological nature of this region we know actually in himalaya himalayan region has faced almost 15 percentage of greatest earthquake of 20th century so this shows how unstable this region is how seismic how highly seismic uh, zone this is so and also when such a zone has highest population concentration it puts the uh, life of many people at risk when dams of these when dams are constructed in these areas, it puts, uh, puts the lives of many of these people in, living in this area at risk. The northeastern Himalayas in particular actually has experienced earthquakes of magnitude 7 and above actually. So you can see how intense, how highly seismic this region, this particular northeast Himalayan region itself is. So when dam is constructed across Yarlung Zambu or Brahmaputra or this Kamlang projects have the potential to cause damage to the lives of the people. For example, in 2015 earthquake that happened in Nepal almost caused 20% loss in hydropower capacity also. It is not just about loss of life. It, the hydropower, the purpose of bu pur uh, building the dams is also getting affected because when 20% loss happens in hydropower project itself, capacity itself, what's the point of building dams for that purpose? Okay, and also these hydropower projects are prone to landslides and when such landslides happen the siltation happens okay so basically what happens that it brings dirt with it and it reduces the water holding capacity of the dams itself what happens now when water holding capacity of the dams get affected there is no point in building such dams because the first part first aspect of building dams is to hold water and when siltation happens because of landslides then there is no point of building it and in addition even if we say that it can be desilted it is not that easy because desiltation is not economically viable in this area and also it is technologically challenging so for these reasons it, it is an issue i mean building dams across this region himalayan region is an issue so till now we saw the issues associated with construction of dams in this Himalayan region. Now let's understand the importance of Himalayan region. See Himalayan region is a transnational mountain chain. So it is a transnational mountain chain because we know that China, uh, Nepal and India share this uh, region and also it is a chief divider of Asian climate because for example even if Himalayas is not there India's climate will itself significantly change. 
the monsoon climate would get affected the wind patterns would get affected so we know that so this plays a major role in climate and also it is a source of a many numerous asian river systems okay starting from brahmaputra ganga there are many rivers that originate here and if this get affected then the that there is a high possibility of water scarcity already there is a threat already this system the whole Him, uh, himalayan region is facing threat due to global warming because the glaciers are retreating and in addition to that if such kind of geological disturbances happen then it would have a serious repercussions and also so this river systems provide water security as i as i mentioned so this uh, these river system provide water security to billions of people in this asian region itself and according to a report the himalayan region has seen the highest rate of de deforestation and land use changes so this is a cause of worry that we have to address and because of this the report has actually recommended conversion of himalayan region into a nature nature reserve okay it should not just be seen as an uh, urban development project where you develop without any sensitivity towards uh, environment because because this is highly uh, a sensitive region environmentally sensitive region it has to be converted into a nat natural reserve through an international agreement not just through a national agreement I mean, at national level it cannot be done at international level it has to be done because many countries as i mentioned before many countries have interest have stake in this region so an international agreement is needed so this is all about uh, this article students so make note of all the important points i mentioned here and try to use them in main answer writing so the second article is on innovations for cleaner air this is more related to your gs3 environment paper so this article actually deals about how india has actually made progress in controlling air pollution so it's the, the article mentions about that india has actually made significant progress in monitoring air pollution why does this why why do they convey this because the number of air quality monitoring stations have significantly increased does that mean just just by increasing the number of monetary uh, monitoring stations does that mean that uh, the air pollution can be significantly reduced it is a tool we cannot directly it doesn't directly reduce the air pollution but it, it is a tool because when you analyze the magnitude of that air pollution and convey this to the public citizens become aware of the air pollution and and its adverse impact on their health and environment so it is a significant progress in controlling the air pollution in this direction the government has taken many policy initiatives as well as many changes in the policies let's see one by one so first one is funding so the 2021 budget has actually significantly allocated for uh, amount for controlling the air pollution okay and also uh, government has established commission for air quality management okay so this commission has been given penal provisions against polluters because these so far many bodies have been created but without any statutory backing or without any provisions to penalize the polluters but this commission has been given penal powers and they operate in the ncr region and the adjoining areas to control the air pollution students remember this point commission for air quality management we have seen an article before on this commission few weeks back so try to relate this with that and it can be asked in prelims okay mm -hmm. india also in addition to this india also has moved to b uh, moved to bs6 from bs4 so this significantly reduces the air pollution from vehicles and india is also trying to pursue e mobility okay there have been many policies that has been focusing on pursuing e mobility to promote e mobility also the pradhan mantri ujwala yojana okay this was launched long back and it, it has actually reduced the indoor air pollution because it has replaced the burning of cow dung and uh, wood wood sticks for cooking purpose by replacing it with lpg gas cylinders and through subsidies so this has significantly reduced the indoor air pollution so far we saw the broad policy changes or policy initiatives that have been taken by the government some of the technological side in terms of technology how 
technological advancements have actually helped in tackling the air pollution let's see that so the indian agriculture research institute iari so they have come out with a bio decompressor that actually turns crop residue into manure into in 15 to 20 days so this is a significant uh, achievement because burning of uh, st uh, stubbles in agriculture field is a major issue in tackling uh, major issue of air pollution so when such compressor bio -com decompressors are made available to the farmers it and if it is cost effective it can tackle the stubble burning and thereby reduce the air pollution in addition to this UNDP that is United Nations Development Program is also promoting startups led innovation such as you no know, filterless retrofit devices for reducing particulate matter at source itself in so these actually can be used in at industries as well as in vehicles to reduce the pollution from particulate matters pm uh, pm matters so in addition to this the advanced digital technology such as geospatial technology and ai that is artificial intelligence aided monitoring identifying and regulating air pollution hotspots so they help to map the areas that are highly polluted and they try to give recommend suggestions to tackle that hotspots so these technology the, when when these technologies are used in mapping the brick manufacturing units so this is an example when brick manufacturing units have been mapped in the whole indo gangetic plain it was helped to it, uh, formulate policies and to mitigate the mitigate the air pollution so in short technological advancements play a significant role in controlling monitoring as well as identifying and mitigating air pollution so all this being said what else needs to be done though we have taken significant measures there is a large gap that needs to be filled in terms of air pollution so what what are they so india needs to develop a single window online platform for showcasing innovation because when innovation happens it is distributed across india and there is no way to know how which innovations can be potentially used in mitigating air pollution when all the innovations are made available in a single window then it would be useful for the policy makers as well as other uh, in the, for the society to understand how what kind of uh, impact that such innovations can make in controlling the air pollution and also there is a need for public private sector participation in developing and enabling ecosystem for innovations because just when when innovation needs to happen it has to be supported incubation centers are required so when innovations for tackling air pollution happen it has to be supported through public policies as well as in addition to the private sector also has to get involved in this and they have to support it and direct why why would they be funding it so the question would be why would public or private would be interested in funding such projects because the direct impact of reducing air pollution when they understand how it can have a direct impact on reducing the health healthcare costs as well as the uh, increase the life expectancy also the uh, economic cost then these kind of incentives would actually motivate them to fund these kind of projects that too government in particular would be interested to fund these projects because most of this healthcare uh, as well as instead of spending on healthcare instead of giving out uh, funding the healthcare system of people when when uh, the air pollution is tackled it significantly reduces the healthcare cost okay so these can incentivize government to fund these projects so this is all for the day students for more classes visit our platform scholar.com as well as subscribe to our channel so till tomorrow's class happy learning bye bye